Tuesday morning in Simpsonville, South Carolina, and the temperature is about 39 degrees. Uh, it is going to warm up all day long and into the evening actually be warmer at 7 o'clock tonight than it is right now. Uh, but it certainly has been a change from the nice weather we've been having. And it's supposed to clear and get sunny again. Have you ever watched the program called MASH? Now, I used to not like it because I thought it was truly an anti-war program. Uh, but now that the war is over and everything's said and done, I kind of enjoy it just for the pure humor of it. And there's a character on MASH called uh, Charles Emerson Winchester III. Charles Emerson Winchester III. Uh, he is a Bostonian who thinks he's better than everybody else. Uh, he thinks because of his high breeding and his Bostonian background, uh, and his family's wealth over the years uh, that he's superior to everybody else and he's the kind of character you love to hate <laughs> because he's so arrogant and so ridiculous. Well in Romans chapter 2 we we have uh, Paul kind of giving us the same kind of theme. Uh, we have uh, leading into this uh, uh, listings of all of the kinds of sins that people are involved in and Probably most of you, as you looked at that list of sins, could think of people that had those sins of gossip and unrighteousness and vengeance and greed and all kinds of things. Uh, or maybe you even thought about the homosexuals on the list. Uh, uh, nevertheless, uh, Paul qu quickly ends that section by saying uh, that if you're judging all of these things and comparing others to yourself, you're making a terrible mistake. And remember he says that we have no excuse because we know the ordinances of God. And so he starts out chapter 2 with a therefore, which means we've got to go look back to see what therefore. And, and what he enters into is a, a section on hypocrites uh, finger pointing, comparing ourselves with others. Now, I love an evangelism explosion. One of the illustrations that they use is uh, that when you point your finger at someone, notice that there are three pointing right back at you. And that's a good illustration because you see, when we point our fingers at somebody else, comparing ourselves with somebody else, uh, we are actually becoming hypocrites because all of us are guilty of sin. And uh, so Paul quickly makes the point uh, that we shouldn't be passing judgment. Judgment is God's business. Uh, now, that doesn't mean we won't know sin when we see it, and it doesn't mean that we can't judge people by their fruits. Uh, but as far as judging them from a condemnation standpoint, we better be real careful. And so in verse 4, uh, he talks about when you consider the kindness and the tolerance and the patience of God, it ought to lead to repentance of self. Not saying, gee, there's a, there's a person that really doesn't understand the goodness of God, and there's a person that really ought to get what he has coming to him. Uh, Paul quickly tells us that hypocrisy is not a pretty thing, and we're not supposed to compare ourselves with others. We're supposed to compare ourselves with Christ. And when we do that, and when we consider his kindness and his tolerance and his patience towards us in our imperfection, it ought to lead to repentance. And he certainly uh, has lots of experience from the scriptures himself to be able to make this conclusion. I mean, after all, Paul could read about David and Bathsheba. Uh, he could read about all of the scriptural verses where some of God's people went way astray and it would be easy to compare ourselves with them and to say oh we're so much better than that uh, but Paul wants us to understand that hypocrisy is not what we need we need to be sure that we come to grips with our own self uh, that is if we become stubborn and, and unrighteous and unrepentant of our own sins and just pointing out other people's sins, we become like Charles Emerson Winston III of MASH. Holier than thou, better than everybody else, more righteous and more uh, chosen than somebody else. 
it's really uh, important that when you get down to verse 11 you see that there is no partiality with God. doesn't matter whether you're Jew, Greek, Gentile. Uh, doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor. doesn't matter whether you're well educated or whether you're not. But the witness and testimony that all of us ought to give has nothing to do with comparison to others. I remember that uh, in church years ago, someone used uh, the story of a man giving testimony in a prayer service. And he says, I'm not what I ought to be. I recognize that. I see uh, Christ's standard and I see that I'm not what I ought to be. And then he looks ahead and he says to himself uh, in his testimony, and I'm not what I'm going to be because I'm going to get better. I'm going to continue to hold myself accountable and I'm going to continue to allow God to conform me to the image of Christ. So I'm not what I ought to be, but I'm not what I'm going to be. And then he looks back and he says, but I'm sure not what I was. That's a good testimony. And it, notice it doesn't compare with anyone else, only with Christ and only with himself. Not what I ought to be, not what I'm going to be but I'm sure not what it was. It's a good testimony. It's one that's not hypocritical. It's one of reality. And hopefully all of us are not what we're going to be, but we sure aren't what we were. And there's plenty of room for improvement in all of us. So remember, God's no respecter of persons. He doesn't like hypocrisy. And when you point the finger at somebody else, there's three fingers pointing back at you. It's your thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.